I actually was one of the drivers that they towed the same day from the speedway. And they charged me 3500 And they said I could only pay in cash. They wouldn't take a car. They wouldn't take a EFS check. They wouldn't take nothing but cash. And you had to pay it. And then I paid for parking. I went home to go get me something to eat and just to check on my family. And I uh, came back an hour later. A truck was towed, like I said. All right, DJ Codeine in the building. Better known as Frederick. All right, man, listen, listen. I, I did so many stories. I I, I had I, I talked about that company on the podcast so many times. So many scandals. So much BS stuff that they do. And who we talking about is A1 Towing out of Memphis, Tennessee. Man. Yeah. Man, listen. They do some scrupulous stuff, man. I mean, it's it's like I don't get it. I I come from that industry. I come from uh, the towing and roadside industry. Not as much as the booting, but I come from that industry. And right now, you know, that particular company is just making the towing industry out there look very Agreed. look very horrible right now, bro. Agreed. And then they they already got. The feds got involved in Arkansas, so they got their license revoked in Arkansas, got kicked out of Arkansas, and they made their way to Tennessee. Now they got their license revoked in Tennessee, so now they're moving to Mississippi. And the crazy part about it, this is my second time dealing with them. The first time they actually towed my truck. All right, let's, uh, all right, let's get into the story, man. What what happened? What happened with you? You know your involvement with. Okay, well, uh, if anybody remember, they seen the news where the lady who was on there come out that the uh, touring company told their truck in charge at twenty nine hundred. I actually was one of the drivers that they told the same day from the speedway, and they charged me thirty five hundred. And they said I could only pay in cash. They wouldn't take a car. They wouldn't take a EFS check. They wouldn't take nothing but cash. And you had to pay it. And then I paid for parking. I went home to go get me something to eat and just to check on my family. And I uh, came back an hour later. My truck was towed. Like I said, I paid for parking, got permission. It was towed. They were very rude. And I actually seen them. The lady husband was the driver of the truck. I actually seen them pull a gun on him. They called another guy there with an AR-15, and they pulled a gun on him. They was AR-15, bro. You you saw that with your own eyes. His father was a firefighter and died in a fire, and so I think the son, the one that is running everything, that got the towing company, he got a big policy off his father. I think. Uh, he's not that old, the guy that's doing it. And he be all on social media, flashing money, bragging, and all this, man. He he don't care about nobody. Like I said, they going to end up getting hurt. And like I said, this was the first time I dealt with him. So the second time, it, it was guns involved with me. And then my wife. What's up? Did you know... Uh, pilot is hard speedway. I'm I'm not sure. I I never I I knew pilot was in the midst of buying some other truck stops, but I I didn't know that speedway was one of them. Yeah, they, they towed down the two pilots on Lamar. Yeah, I'm yeah I'm familiar with that. Yeah, they yeah they did that because so, they about to they about to do some intercessions with the, with the roads yeah. over there. Well, they bought the speedway. Cause you can, because you can use your pilot car at the speedway. Okay. Okay. They are joint. They are joint venture. Okay. So is this still like a corporate venture, or do you think this is still like what do you call it, franchise? Uh, I think they actually bought it. So that's that's 
that's part of them. Speedway basically is pilot. It is is nothing but a pilot. It's a different name. So why would why would pilot associate themselves with a garbage company like A one? And see, uh, I can answer that for you. It's because you have some employees that work in the inside that are members of the people that work at A1 or they're real close friends with people that work at A1. And so when you got somebody on the inside that's speaking up for A1 with them not knowing really how A1 is or not knowing A1 intention, it, it's crazy. Because I've heard some stories where people pull in to get fuel or use the restroom and come back out and A1 told their truck out the fuel out. Wow. All right, so the first time you was there, you got permission. You paid for the re the reserve parking they had, or is it different, or was it a different no, type no. of pay parking? They said if you wanted to set over 24 hours, you had to pay for parking. That ensures your truck wouldn't be towed. So I asked them again. I said, are you sure my, my truck won't be towed if I pay for parking? The lady told me yes, and I paid, what was it? I think it was $15. And then the crazy part about it, after they towed my truck, and I went in there at the Speedway, well, where was my truck? And they told me it's been told the same lady was in there and she had she agreed with me and she told them that he paid he paid for towing. You paid for parking. I mean he paid for parking, I'm sorry. He paid for parking, so his truck shouldn't have been towed. And the lady kinda of felt bad because she's the one told me that it was okay to park and I paid for parking. But that was I was driving a friend of mine that had his own company. So of course the friend of mine had to pay for his pay for pay to get the truck back. But I had to pay him back over the course of a few weeks out of paycheck. Wow, man, that's 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 crazy. You 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 paid for parking, and they still came and 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 snatch your stuff up right there, man. That's that's crazy right there. Even I'm 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 shocked at the fact that Pilot slash Speedway have dealings with them because the other parking spots that I heard about that A1 towing is associated with is like mom and pop garbage places. So you you park at a you park at a place and some of the people even said nobody is there. Like it ain't no signs up or nothing like that. But they, they come around and snatch up their trucks and then they show you like, oh yeah, there's there's the sign right there. But but yeah. speedway That's though? It. All right. The speedway. And then the speedway, the guy that got told the the lady you seen on the news that they told them you yeah. in mind, they actually was doing local work that day. And it says it says right on the sign, if you set over twenty four hours without moving your truck, then it would be told. That guy, he was doing local stuff and so that day he didn't have I guess he didn't have a load. He went and moved his truck for four hours and then brought it back. So he never sit over twenty four hours and they still towed his truck. Man, Fred, that's 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 crazy. All right, so that was the first interactions with them. The first second one, yes, sir. The second one involves you and your wife. So what happened? Yeah. What happened there that made you actually drive the truck with the boot on it? Okay, so uh, I was at the Niagara, right, right, right next door to it. Was it's not right next door to it. It's like maybe a block or two from it. So I I got my load, and so I was doing a split sleeper. So if I stop and take a couple hours in the sleeper, my clock will restart. So I made it to the store that was right there up the street from Niagara. So I pulled in. I didn't see no sign. Said nothing about you have to pay for parking. I ain't see no sign said it that said it wasn't okay to park. And I seen a couple of other trucks parked there. And like I said, I pick up at Niagara all the time. So I seen a few trucks parked there all the time. So I pull in and bag in. And I'm sitting there and I'm waiting. To, I had like two hours and 45 minutes. No, I had like three hours and 15 minutes for my time to come back. So I was up for two hours and 45 minutes. My wife came and met me as soon as I parked because I had been on the road for two weeks. And so she wanted to spend some time with me. So she parked around front. And she came and got in the truck with me. So me and her spent a little bit of time together, just talking and spent a little bit of time. So as we sat there, me and her was watching my TV in the back. And we kind of dozed off. But I had been up for two hours and 45 minutes, and I dozed off. Right after I dozed off, I'm guessing they sitting somewhere watching, and I dozed off. All I know, I wake up with loud bang on the door. So I get up. My wife said, what is that? So somebody knocking on the door. So I get up, peek out the curtain, and he was like, uh... This is A1 towing. Uh, you got to pay to get the boot off. We done boot you because you've been sitting here over 15 minutes. 
with a boot at your truck and you got to pay to get the boot off. Plus you got to pay for parking. I said, pay to get the boot off. I said, man, you can't just up and put a boot on someone's truck. You have to notify them first that they're going to get a boot. I said, if you knew I wasn't supposed to be parked here, you should have warned me when I first got here. If you all said you got security guards securing the lot, you knew I've been sitting here a while. So why didn't you come and tell me? I would have paid for parking if that was the case. Now, you, you can't, now since you arguing with me, you can't even pay to get the boot off. We're going to tow your shit. Okay. So, man, the, I, no, no. I let the window on the, the woman and the young man, the kind of smaller young man. I let the woman up and just completely quit talking to him. That's what I told that. They went and got the bigger guy. So the big guy, I guess he's supposed to be the intimidator. So the bigger guy walked to the truck. Me and him have a heated dis- disagreement. But we, we, we're arguing with each other at this point. And so he kind of got me out of my character. Kind of got me mad. He kind of got me into my way. And I changed for better. But say this is people don't know what someone has on their mind or don't know what type of person you're dealing with or you don't know what's going on in that person's mind before you go to trying to talk crazy to people. So to get back on the story, he's, he's talking crazy to me. And that's when he told me, well, since you want to argue with me, you're not going to pay nothing. We're going to tell your shit. You ain't going to better pay nothing. So excuse my language. I said, man, you can't just tow my truck. I said, I, I would love to see you try. So he started sticking stickers on my truck and put a card in the window. So I let the window down, take the stick off, throw it on the ground, knock the card off. He pick it back up and put it back on there again. So my wife said, just let the window up and just, just don't even argue with it. Okay, I let the window up and then he argue. Okay, so after that, he called two more other cars. So now it's four cars that got my trucks around. And so I called the police. Okay, they sent Marsh County Police Department out there. Now, before the police got there, there was guns involved. That They didn't pull guns. They didn't got guns out the trunk. And they got guns on them. Okay, the police police get there. They didn't get out the vehicle. I had to get out and walk to the vehicle. And there's some police officers. He let the A1 towing people come right over there while I'm doing my report. And he said it right in front of A1 towing. This is private property. We can't do nothing. We come out here all the time for A1 towing. I said, and so y'all haven't did nothing. I said, he don't even need to be over here while I'm doing my report because I've told you that it was guns involved. He said, well, I'm just going to make the report. He made the report and left. But to get to where the guns got involved, the big guy walked off after he was putting the stickers on, threw them off. So he come back to the truck and he went to talking crazy again. So uh, man, he was almost about to get in a fist fight at this point. And so that's when he was talking crazy to him, arguing back and forth, and he told me to get out the truck. So as I'm finna get out the truck, my wife grabbed me because my wife seen the lady and the other young man that I was uh, previously talking to go to the truck and grab guns out. So my wife said, uh-uh, no, no, don't do that. Stay, stay in here. She said, you didn't you see what they just did? I said, no, but I'm, I'm just more worried about him because he's talking. Because at the end of the day, I'm a protector and a provider. And so she said, they just went and got some guns out the trunk. So if you get out there and you and him get to the fight, they probably going to shoot you. I said, well, you're right. I got to make it home to my children. So I had to bite my tongue and just sit down. And so sitting right there, they called another tow truck in. It's the tow truck pulling in and then about the bag in. They move out in front of my truck. And that's when they get out with the gun. And so instead of me sitting there, I just pulled out with the boot on the truck and broke the boot because I was in fear for me and my wife's safety. So, but I don't condone nothing off with a boot. But like I said, that was a life and death situation. Oh, hold on. Wait a minute. Yeah. You had the police out there. Yeah. You told them there was guns involved. Yes. And the police still didn't do nothing? Nothing. Made a report and left with me standing right there with the guys that had the gun. They left me and my wife there with the people that had the gun that we was already in a heated discussion with them. Not saying I had a gun, but not knowing if I had one. Not knowing what I had on my mind. So, of course, if I had one and they pulling up guns, I'm in fear for my life. I'm going to protect myself. I'm flabbergasted. It, it was it in Memphis. Memphis. This was in, it was in Mississippi. See, when I when I pulled off and broke the boot, I went exactly to the speedway where I got told the first time. But, see, I went to the speedway because it was in Tennessee, and I know their license was suspended in Tennessee. And so I called the News Channel 3, and they came out there and did the interview with me at the Speedway. Because I told them, I said, they started pulling guns and threatening. And, man, the guy got into a heated conversation. But it was Mississippi Police Department. Oh, Marshall. okay, okay. So this is in Mississippi and not Tennessee. 
Yeah, this happened okay. in Mississippi. Yeah. Okay, sir. thank you. Thank you for, for clearing that up. No, no, it's when I pulled off with the boot and broke the boot. And then the crazy part about it, when I pulled off and broke the boot, no one chased me. No one came after me. And my wife said they knew they was in the wrong. That's why they didn't chase you or come after you. I never got a call to my company that I'm leasing the truck from, that I'm buying the truck from. They never got a call saying I pulled off and broke a boot. They didn't do nothing. They just wanted to get money out of me. And they had, like, there was three more other drivers that had boots on that truck as well. But I'm the only one because I knew that license had been spent in Arkansas, Tennessee, and now Mississippi is working to suspend their license as well. I knew that, and I knew them because I dealt with them. We got into a heated argument then, so now he's telling me that he's going to tow my truck, and I can't pay. He he. He knocked my airliner loose. He threatened to take my dry shelf out. He threatened to tow the truck while me and my wife were sitting in it. And that's when I told him then, I said, if you put your hands on my truck or tow my truck, I would get out and elf you up. I said, you think because you're bigger than me, that don't mean nothing. I will work weight off you. I said, my hands do work now. And so that's when my wife grabbed me and was like, no, don't get out. You didn't see what they pulled out the trunk. You didn't see what they did. I said, no, what did they do? She said, they went to the trunk and got guns. So they waiting on you to get out and fight this guy, and they're going to shoot you. I said, okay. So I had to dumb it down and well, I, take the of my life. I think the guys over at A1 Towing use those those guns as tactics. Some of the people yeah. some of the people mentioned that some of them is not even, is, is even loaded. But we don't know that. Yeah, I don't know that. We we don't know that. Me, you you you, have, you come you you come do a, you come do a ice cube reveal. We got a problem here. I'm I'm thinking the yeah. gun is loaded. Yeah, and like I said, I got a wife. I have I have eleven children. I have six girls and five boys that I gotta make sure that's okay. I have three that then did some college, and for them to treat me as somebody that's younger than me, some of them I or actually old enough to be my children and talking crazy. And I'm like, man, I just felt all the way disrespectful. And it makes you feel hopeless because I'm the, I got to protect my wife, but I'm at a point to where I can't protect. Her. I'm only trying to make a living, man. I, I'm, I don't didn't have to go through this. It's making me question whether I want to keep driving because like I said, I've, I've been doing this since 2007 and I don't work with a few companies. I know how this goes. The only thing companies really care about is their freaking delivery. They don't really care. They'll say they understand, but then they still want you to do stuff that puts you in harm's way. Even after you explain them and tell them it's a life and death situation. The only thing they care about. And I told my company, I said, what if I had a guy killed? How was the little going to get there? The only thing you was going to tell my family was you sorry for what happened. But then you was going to put somebody else in my place and lease the same truck I got to someone else and let them go ahead and do it. So that's got me contemplating the world. I even want to keep driving. Like, it's not worth it. The rates are messed up, and then you have to go through that. That whole situation that transpired, you you did get in contact yeah. with your company. What what did your company say yeah. after after all of that? I'm going to be full 100 transparent with you. They really didn't give a flying, you know what. Basically, when I called my company and said that they got a boot on my truck, there's guns involved, they threatened me. One of the dispatchers that one told me, well, was you supposed to be parked up? She just disregarded me saying they threatened me. My life is in danger. They got guns. Only thing she asked me, were you supposed to be parked up? And since I'm an independent contractor, see, this is what company does. I'm going to tell you. And so I've been doing this a while. When you're an independent contractor and you do good, the company say you you work for them. They're proud of you. They they talk about you. They tell everybody about you. But time something is interfering with your life or you do something wrong, then that is, that's what they use their term, independent contractor. He don't work for us. He's an independent contractor. So that's basically what they treated me like, an independent contractor. Because basically they just told me, are you still going to be able to deliver the load? I didn't have a near-death experience. Didn't bother to say if you was all right. How you feeling? Is is are you gonna still be able to deliver that load? That's wow. Yep, they, they ordered to say that the first night it happened. Now some other dis that wasn't all the dispatchers. Now a few more. I think it was one or two more dispatchers that came on, and they basically just asked, "Was I all right?" And the guy told me, he said, "I don't blame you. I'd have pulled off too. Are you okay?" He said, "What do we need to do? Do we need to cancel this load?" He asked me, "What do we need to do?" This was another dispatcher that came on. 
And I could tell he was family oriented. But the first couple I talked to, they just wanted to know if I still on the first date. I'm and they you know I have a rider policy on my truck. So they thinking my wife was with me, but my wife extra came and met me. So they want to try to find a way to get rid of me now. Uh was your wife on the truck with you? I said, yeah, she came and visited me. I said, but I got a rider policy in place. I already paid for it for the whole year because I knew sometime my wife was going to ride with me. So I already paid for a rider policy. So they couldn't do nothing that way. Wow, man, that's that's yeah. that's crazy. Uh, to hear this story, I, I, what, what do you think, man? A one towing is 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 targeting us, like literally. Yeah, like I, right. I, I, I think I think that they're targeting us truck drivers because they they feel that it's a money grab. What What do you think? Yeah, uh, that too. And then, you know, the guy that owned the A1 to him, you know, he was caught up in a scandal with stolen cars, too. So it just, it's, you know how they say, something, sometimes it's just in the person to do bad, do wrong in everything he does. He, he, he done show time and time again that he don't do stuff legally or legitimate because he's been caught up in so many scandals. And then they got, they got three different companies, but it still has the A1 in it. But they got A1 Exclusive, A1 Car Hauler, and A1 Touring. So they got three different companies. So what they do, they get a different LLC. Once that one get blown up and taken away or suspended license, they get a different LLC and go up on a different name, but they still use the A1. All right, Fred. So A1 did send Channel 3 a statement. In that statement, it says there are more than five signs on that particular property. Uh, the sign states that you must pay park immediately. If you do not, you will be booted and or told. It says A1 has private off-duty officers monitoring the lots as security. So that do you think that could be a reason why the officers didn't do as much as you think that they should have did because of that statement? Yeah, that could be the reason, but... To, to tell you, there was there's no five signs there. I think it might have been one sign when you first pull in, and then the rest of the signs that stating stating to and referring to are no dumping signs. It don't say nothing about parking. It says no dumping or you will be prosecuted if you get caught dumping, throwing trash. Them the signs that are there. And like, how can they explain towing people truck out the fear aisle for using the restroom at that same? store that they did all this it's been stories where people truck have been told by just going in and use the restroom at the same store and then the officer stated that he all he always come out there because of a situation like this wow but even in this what in the e i paid for parking and still got told think about it now it, it might not even be the store sign it might be just a one sign and like i said they have friends and family members that work in them stores because the lady that went in the trunk got the gun, she actually was working in the store. She had an apron on. Even in this statement, it says that you must pay to park immediately. Like, what if you just yeah. using the bathroom, going there to, to buy something? That makes the store look bad, right? It got it. Yeah, it, it got to be so something bad. like if I'm coming into your store to use the bathroom and then when I come out, I I, I purchase a few things and then yep. come out to my come out to my truck to find it booted. That's not cool. No, no. They, they was coming out to find their truck gone. They told it that quick. It wasn't booted. They didn't get chance to get booted. They just got told. That's not cool. Like, a like what would be the what would be the told. explanation? What what is the explanation for them to tow your the 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 tow your truck? You was only in there. I'm and I'm just saying from a yeah. broad spectrum as a driver, you're you're only in there for like 15, 20 minutes. What's the explanation yeah. for yeah. that? What they told me was I was there over 15 minutes and I had to pay $700. That's what they said at first. And then he said I had to pay $400. They kept changing the price, but I only could pay in cash. So I guess their explanation is you're there longer than 15 minutes. They got a right to tow. Like uh, it was another store. I think it was Arkansas. It was a Iranian store. And he had hired A1 to uh, be tow people truck if they stayed at a park. I think it might have been Arkansas. I'm not for sure. So don't, don't, don't. The whole kid mad at this kind of it, it was somewhere i know it was the iranian store and he hired them he contracted them to be the towing company and so but he didn't know how they was and what their intentions were and so i think the iranian guy started trying to he started paying to get some of the people truck 
back because he felt bad. Because they read out that he signed the contract with him. They told every truck on the parking lot right after he signed the contract with him. They came and told you that you was there for 15 minutes. And then after that, they, they booted you. Is there anywhere on a parking lot that gives you a time limit of how long you can stay until... You have to leave? No, it, it don't. But usually when it's a correct sign, it says if you sit in there more than three hours. Because if you go to the Lowe's and Pilot, if you sit there in a reserve spot for more than three hours, they're going to come knock on your door and tell you you got to move or pay for this spot or you're going to be told or pull in a spot that's free to park. They're not just going to put a boot on. But see, they didn't They didn't tell me to pay until after they had, they already had booted my truck when they're knocking on the one. The boot was already on. I didn't get a warning. Like, I, it's like, you got to pay to get this boot off or we going to tow it. Then when I had a disagreement with him, he's like, fuck your money. We don't want your money. You're going to pay. You're going to, what do he say? We're going to tow your shit. You can't pay to get the boot off. That's what he told me. And then they tried to charge me $700 to get the boot off. By law, the maximum amount you can charge is $50 to have a boot removed. And I heard some cases where they charge some drivers $8,000. i have seen where they charge the lady that sat in there for seven hours. They charge her company $30,000. Yeah, that, that company, along with two other companies that been that been victims, they got a, I believe, I don't want to say the direct number. I know they got a multi-million dollar lawsuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I going against going against one the, a one uh, uh one of the companies he a smaller company uh he's actually a friend with the guy that it happened to me the first time the guy was driving this truck he's actually buddies with him he they actually are the company that kind of got this thing rolling with the lawsuit against you think that they got a case you think they they can possibly win their case oh yeah they they got a case because like i said they got they got suspended out of arkansas first for doing the same thing like they're still doing the same. They're still doing the same practice that that that's getting them in trouble. And like I said, the guy been caught up in so many scandals. It don't. It's ridiculous. He been caught up in so many scandals. So I see how he keep getting by. And so now to be suspended out of Arkansas and then be suspended out of Tennessee. And reason Tennessee is got involved with it is because he told a UPS truck. And that's federal. It's the government. Well, Fred, man, I'm I'm glad everything worked out for you, and I'm I'm glad that you did what you did. I I would have did the same thing, for real, for real. I would have did the exact same thing. I would have I would have waited for that opening, or just like a football yeah. field, you wait for that opening, and then you just rush right through. Fuck one love, it's the bloody glove. Leaving blood stains on Broncos in the Hertz window. I drive on the 405. Is he dead or alive? Port took another north, jumping over chairs as I run through the airport. So I can catch a flight away from the drama. Number 32 chilling in the Bahamas. Oh, shuck it. And yeah, I'm and glad you did crazy. that. Yeah, and it's crazy because that still don't don't resolve nothing. Like, I'm out of, I was on board to make gross seven thousand six hundred dollars for the week next week that i lost out on because i'm stuck with that same load what happened that same night it happened i still have the same load on my train that i'm i wasn't able to deliver and so i lost out on every other load after that so i was on board to gross seven thousand six hundred dollars for the week now i'm not gonna gross nothing because of them so let's circle back you did say that uh, that you drove off you broke off the the, the boot did the boot do any damage yes, to the to the to the rim or anything when you drove off? It did damage to the rim. They actually showed it on uh, the news. Actually showed it when they interviewed me. They showed it on daybreak. They showed my story. Yeah, it it, it had the tire. Uh, my tire is wobbling now in my rim. And like I said, I'm an independent contractor, so I have to come out of my pocket and pay buy a new rim and a tire. And if anybody know that drives eighteen wheelers, they know rims and tires are not cheap. So to lose out on money and then got to come out of my pocket with more money. Like I said, I have a big family and a wife that I have to support. And on top of this, I just started back over the road because in July, I lost my house and everything to a house fire due to weather. Lightning struck my home and burnt everything up. Me and my wife and children lost everything. We was living in my van and then to go back over the road and finally get it back on track to them doing this to me. Like I said, you never know what's going on in someone's head. You never know what they've been going through. And for you to do things like that, 
is is sickening. It's sad. Well, yeah. shout out to your wife for pulling you back in because I'm I'm definitely yeah. sure it would have been ugly. So shout out to her yeah, for for pulling you back in and kind of calming you down and and again yeah. you waiting for your opportunity and you you just snatched it man with all yeah. this stuff that that went on and everything that everything else that's going on with a one man what what would be your moral of the story man man moral of the story is basically it's just to anybody that's working a nine to five or doing anything try to start your own business. Because, like I said, it might not be all jobs, but some of them, most of them, they really don't care about you. So you should, a job, I think a job is only to help you, mold you into being a, your own boss. To get in and learn how it works on the business side and do your own thing. Because, and take care of yourself. Because no one is going to take care of you like you. And if you can't help self, then you can't help no one else. And just be aware of your surroundings. Like me, I wasn't aware of a little bit of my surroundings. I'm always aware of my surroundings. Just that one time when I got out of character and a heated disagreement, I wasn't aware of my surroundings. So be aware of your surroundings and have a mind of your own and stand up and start your own business. Don't let nothing stop you. The only thing that stop you from bettering yourself is you. So that's, that's the moral of the story. Fred, I appreciate it, man. And fuck one love, it's the bloody glove. Leaving blood stains on Broncos in the Hertz window. I drive on the 405. Is he dead or alive? Port took another snort, jumping over chairs as I run through the airport. So I can catch a flight away from the drama. Number 32 chilling in the Bahamas. Oh, shucky.